All right, when we talk about culture, what is culture? When you sure. hear the word, yes, go ahead. The way of life of a people, of a group of that people. That is one of the definitions that we have come to accept that culture is the way of life. When I was going to school and they asked, what is culture? Culture is a way of life, right? And it is a very simplistic definition that we would have used and it is the best way of explaining culture. However, scholars would have elaborated on that definition over the years and one of this way is Somebody, could you read, read this for me, please? This definition of what culture is. I'll read it. Culture is the complex system of meaning and behavior defy the way of life for a given group or society. It includes beliefs, values, knowledge, art, morale, laws, customs, traditions, habits, language and dress among other things and very good thank you very much Richard. so yeah. with culture uh what this definition it's very very broad and i would want you to use that definition if you get an test or get an essay on uh in your yeah maybe you're not going to repeat it uh directly but you could say that culture is very complex and it includes things like belief, values, knowledge, laws, morals, all of these different stuff, right? How you dress. Now, with culture, in society, culture defines uh, our perception, what how we perceive things beautiful, what is ugly, what is right, what is wrong, what is good. Okay? That's culture is am i with the correct yes all right powerpoint so another is that culture all society together because society uh once the society is together there's some sense of belonging when people practice the very same thing culture you could have a society that is very diverse when it comes to culture but the diversity is something that binds the society together, right? And there are some common things in the society that is accepted. So if you live in a society that is very diverse, respect for others is, would be one of the values of that society, all right? When we talk about culture, we also talk about things like our religion, race, age, sexual orientation, so, socioeconomic status or ethnicity, gender, generation, nationality, education, all of these different uh, facets also influence how we view uh, things in society. So our society could have multiple religion, uh, multiracial, uh, the age group could be various, different sexual orientations, the socioeconomic status, you have poor, rich, white, all of these, well, poor, rich, all of that, ethnicity, gender, all of these different stuff determines your culture. Now, cultural studies scholars would have divided culture into two groups, material culture and non-material culture. When they talk about material culture, they are talking about things that you can actually touch, which is part of culture. Things like artifacts, objects, buildings, print, cell phone, what other things you, you can touch in a society that determines your culture. Society. Material culture, examples of material culture. Sir, food. Food, yes. Food is part of your material culture, a very important part of the material culture. Any other thing? Clothing. Yes, the different clothes, well, the, the style of clothes, the fabric. Any other thing? Go ahead, Fetcher. Sir, instruments. 
instruments, yes. And you are you referring to musical instruments? Yes, instrument? sir. Musical instruments. Your musical instrument uh, that also determines your material culture. No, non-material culture includes things like our norms or laws, things that we cannot touch, but we put them into practice. Uh, our customs, our ideas, our beliefs. These are some of the things when we deal with material culture, non-material culture, things that are not, you can't put your hands on, but it is something that is in the mind that comes out when you actually behave. Material culture uh, influence or material culture influence or behavior. It, determines, it tells you what is right or what is wrong. It tells you how to behave, right? Material culture teaches you basically how you should relate to the material part of the world, all right? So these are how culture scholars would have divided culture into these two groups, material and non-material culture. Next. Characteristics of culture. There are five ways in which we characterize culture. Uh, one is that we believe that cultural scholars would have said culture, one characteristic of culture is learned behavior, customs and tradition, norms and values, institutions that prescribe behavior, and gender role, gendered roles, right? Now, let us look at learned behavior as one. Now, culture, and this is very important, if you are going to discuss culture as learned behavior, you must realize that culture is not biological. It is not something you were born with. You were not born Jamaican with a Jamaican culture, or you were born with a Cuban culture or North American culture. You were actually born a human being and you were taught the culture, right? So culture is learned behavior. Things that you learned, it's not biological. And so we have to be careful when it comes to our I, uh, seeing, because if you were born somewhere else in the world, you will view certain things differently based on how you were taught. I saw a, a stuff on Facebook sometime back where they said they had some a black and a white child. And the child actually, uh, they are children and the children were playing together. And Somebody said that racism is something that is taught. You were actually taught to be racist because the children in their innocence, they have no idea of these racial norms or these racial segregation. They are playing because they see individual human beings, but after a period of time, um, that those two children will understand the world in that the world is very much divided along racial lines. And I, which brings me to another point, uh, the young man, I think is not William, Prince Henry. Prince Henry is the one that is married to Meghan, right? Now, he made a comment recently in an article where he said that, listen, I had no idea, this was his exact word, I had no idea that Blacks went through Sorry about that, that was a mistake. All right, so he said that 
he had no idea of the experience that blacks would have gone through, people of African descent and the racism surrounding is when he was, he actually got married to his wife that he understood, you know, get to understand the struggles of black. So, so people comment on the article and said, well, we grew up sheltered. He had no idea that the system, that racism was actually a system that was actually set up by his family. Uh, and so culture, uh, we call it culture is learned behavior, things that you actually learn. Now scholars also say that culture shapes our behavior, how we behave. And culture is reflected in symbols. These symbols are language to how we speak. If you realize that some of us speak differently, we pronounce our word differently. Even if we are from the same country, we tend to speak differently. Perfect example, there's this person, the Mark Golin, who was rec recently elected uh, as the People's National Party president. His, I've heard him on the TV speaking Patwa, right? And he said that he grew up as somebody of privilege in Jamaica, right? Father was a British person who came to Jamaica, met his mother here, and he was the product. His mother was also from a very elite family in Jamaica. And so he grew up very, but his Creole sounds like when I was teaching my, uh, when he speaks a Creole, I don't know if he wants to convince us that he was down to earth, or maybe he's just very much down to earth, but his Creole sounds like, uh, we call it now, when I was teaching my friends in university from Germany, Jamaica and Patois, that's how it sounds. In fact, my friend, a very good friend of mine from France, uh, he actually learned English in Jamaica, came here fluent, well, came to Jamaica to learn English and later on did his PhD on Jamaica and Haiti. And his patois is much better than Mark Golding's patois. But culture, represent itself in symbols, things like language or habits or gestures or religion. Most of us are in certain religion or denomination today because we grew up that way. You're Catholic because your parents Catholic, your parents parents Catholic. You're Methodist because your parents parents Methodist. You're Anglican because of that. How you were grew up in an Anglican house. You are uh, Seventh day Adventist because of that, the Jehovah's Witness because of that. So, your, your behavior, how you eat around the table, also is how your parents would have trained you, right? You, what else? So, your church, how you view things, even political parties. You grew up in a PNP house, more likely you're going to be a PNP. If you grew up in a JLP house, you're going to be a JP. If you're going to be in a house that people don't talk about politics, none at all, then guess what? You don't, you don't care about politics. And even if you are at this age and you don't care about politics, but somebody in your family who is political, once you reach some level of maturity in life, you're going to lean towards the political party of the person within your house. And so culture determines our behavior. Now, there are two concepts associated with culture. One, enculturation, which is a process by which culture is passed from one generation to the next, and socialization, which enculturation and socialization basically saying the same thing that the process through which individuals learn the behavior from one member of the society. Now, scholars note, especially sociologists, they tend to focus a lot on socialization, right? And they mention that there are two types of socialization, primary socialization and secondary socialization. 
primary socialization involves the family. So that is where you learn everything. Well, not everything, but you learn some things. The family. The family is very important. Whether you grow up with your grandmother, you're going to learn a lot of things from your grandparents. They're going to teach you what life is, or how to behave, how to speak, your different habits that you're going to have, the, your different religious views. And then the next one is a secondary, whether you're a church, if you're a Christian, you go to a church. If you are a Jew, you go to the synagogue. If you are a Muslim, you go to the mosque. And the different school you attend also helps to socialize you. One of the things my wife said to me, listening to my, sometimes she listens to my class. And she said to me that all the girls at your school speak the same way. What I said, but maybe because I am around, I teach them, I kind of know that everybody sound a little bit, they sound different to me. But she said, all of them have a same uh, uh, way in which how they pronounce their words. Uh, it is a good thing because the school would have shaped how you behave, right? Uh, your peers also influence. Ever hear about something called peer pressure? Yes. So how you are socialized, your parents could have grown up very proper and nice. Your peers can influence your socialization process, yes. And so you could, you could be very much influenced by your peers. Another way in which no scholars are including is the media. The media also influence social behavior, all right? Another, well, we have a lot of things to go through, man, I'm going. The, another ladies is, customs and tradition. And so some of the customs and traditions that we, so culture is also things like customs and tradition, things like our dance, our arts, our craft, the rituals, the different superstitious beliefs that we have, right? I'm not going to go through what is the difference between customs and tradition, but some of the traditions that we have is that on Saturdays, you ensure that on a Saturday, Saturdays in Jamaica, what you, what you most, well, most homes in the Caribbean on a Saturday, you cook soup, any type of soup, you know that soup is something is, you, you do and you eat, you drink on a Saturday. The next are eat on a Saturday. The next is uh, some of the tradition is that on a Sunday, most homes in the Caribbean on a Sunday, uh, when it comes to our, the, our customs and traditions, on a Sunday, you prepare either your chicken with your or your pork or some meat or with rice and peas. If you don't have rice and peas on a Sunday, it seems as if Sunday is not Sunday. Even if it is a little, even if you're doing dumpling, you still somebody feel like a, your Sunday is just not Sunday without rice and peas. Whether it is gungu rice or peas or the red beans, right? You just feel that, and that is, a tradition that would have passed down to us. Uh, kalaloo. Kalaloo is something that we eat mostly in the morning. I can saltfish and dumpling. This look like an evening lunch, but if you go to juicy patties, you can buy this in the morning. These are some when our, it, our customs and traditions that we have. In Jamaica and the other Caribbean countries, one of the main customs are uh, of Christ, our, one of the main tradition of Christmas is the fruit cake. This is what we call they call black cake, and it is my favorite. Price might not have it on sale, and if you if you're following Auntie Donna on they call that no Facebook or Twitter, whatever Auntie Donna sells these nice black cakes. 
when it comes to Christmas time, every home doing some form of cake, black cake. I don't understand how people grow up Caribbean and don't like black cake, but black cake is very, very nice. And then another Christmas tradition that we have here in the Caribbean, well, in Jamaica, is market, what they call grand market. So they, on Christmas Eve, you go out and you shop in a, you're shopping and buy up your, all your little things. Then you also do a big cleaning, you put up your curtains. What else? The, you drink sorry for Christmas. These are some of the different traditions that we have for Christmas. Also, there are festivals that we have and certain things that we do, like for example, dance hall, carnival, the reggae, all of these different stuff falls under some of our musical traditions. Another way in which we view culture is norms and values, right? And so when we talk about norms and values, norms and values, norms, and you need to know the difference between what is a norm and norm and a value. Norms are common, acceptable, and expected way to behave. So how you are expected to behave is the norm. Value is the how you rank certain qualities or what how you feel about certain things within a society, right? Now, Kevin Thompson et al. in your textbook said that norms and value acts as guides of social attitude and behavior that helps to form what is considered normal behavior. So if you go outside of the norm, right? People might criticize you are, you get punished or you get disadvantaged as a result of going outside of the norm. And because of that, people will not value you, right? The same thing are going to, and if people, if you go according to the norms in society, you get some form of acceptance and advancement, reward or praise. So these are the different ways, ladies, in which norms, uh, norms and values act as culture. And remember, norms and values act as the non-material culture within our society. Uh, one example of a norm in our society is, I think I'm using the wrong PowerPoint, but I would have updated this PowerPoint, but anyway, one of the way in which we, one of the norm in society is that whenever somebody comes to your house, when you start to cook, or when you're cooking, right? Or your parents cooking, you cook enough food. You cook enough food. Why? Because we value hospitality, uh, hospitality in the Caribbean. So if somebody should come by your house, you have in, and they said, all right, you offer them, do you want something to eat or do you want some of the food? It is better they say no then you didn't offer. Because if you didn't offer them, even if they don't want it, you didn't offer them. They're going to leave your house and they're going to say that, listen, you know that that person don't nice and they mean? Yes, Caribbean people is like that. You must offer them something. It's preferred even if it's a cup of water when somebody comes to your house. Offer them a cup of water, some juice or something. Show them that you know that you, because... Caribbean people value uh, being hospitable. Another thing is marriage. We value marriage in this society, in Caribbean society, between a male and a female. That's the value uh, uh, the, in, or the norm in our society, right? So there's some level of normality when it comes. But if somebody should go against that norm, uh, when it comes to marriage and they should form themselves in maybe homosexual uh, relationship, they know 
are going to be at a disadvantage. There are some of them are being punished and they are not accepted and they are criticized, right? Because the value is on marriage. The norm in the society is that, listen, the relationship in Caribbean society between males and females. And that was one of the examples that is in your textbook by Kevin Thompson et al, right? So, so far, ladies, when we look at characteristics of culture, we look at culture as being learned behavior, things that you actually learn, culture as being customs and tradition, some of the customs that we actually have. I can't believe that the, is that a PowerPoint never saved, but something is wrong anyway. And dealing with customs and tradition, ladies, uh, some of the customs that we have is customs that have to do with death, uh, traditions that have to do with death. You have uh, after nine days, you have the nine nights or the way, the setup, all of these different stuff is part of the custom and tradition. Some of the customs and tradition that we have when we believe in things like doppy stories, most of us, even if they go to church and they tell you that, listen, doppy is not real, or you grew up in a family and they tell you that doppy is not real. If one night you hear the pot in the kitchen fall down or something fall down in the kitchen in the night, in your back of your mind, you think that a doppy is there, you have to be constantly telling yourself that doppy is not real. And that's just a fact. Another, so these things deal with custom and tradition. So the other two characteristics of culture includes institution that prescribe behavior and gendered roles. So let us look at institutions. So what are the different institutions that tells us how to behave? Religion, right? The church, which falls part of religion, but especially in Caribbean society, and in Jamaica, Christianity is a dominant faith that determines how we should behave. Uh, the justice system. If you go against the rule, you know you're going to get locked up or the court is going to punish you. Education system. The schools are very much influenced by the church and the school teach you how to behave. So, institution that prescribe behavior is also part of culture. Another is gendered roles, right? Our different perception of masculinity and femininity, right? And so when we look at feminine, non-aggressive, these are what the perception, the traditional stereotype, uh, uh, females are talkative, emotional, verbal, kind, tactful, nurturing, easily hurt emotionally. You shouldn't cry, right? Well, you should cry, always cry and showing feelings. While for the males, they are supposed to really cry. They should be aggressive, independent, dominant, active, uh, shouldn't talk a lot. I'm wondering where they get that one from. Should be tough, less sensitive to others. No, on when when Biden won the election, there is a black journalist on CNN that cried, and he cried because he said, "Oh, it's really victory for you know." People all across America, especially black people, they can't breathe now because a racist president is gone and he started to cry now. Somebody who is from his say political party, uh, a, a correspondent was interviewing a politician and he said that he understood, well, he can sympathize with the journalist, but he would not necessarily show, you know, that form of, we call it now show his emotion in public by crying. And I know him immediately was knocking the journalist's masculinity by saying that. 
And in Caribbean society, if a male is very talkative, you, and most, uh, most females would say, if they hear a male be talkative, they hear them say that, listen, you just chat, you chat too much, you chat like a gal. Yes, that is a very prominent stuff that they would tell the males uh, if they speak too much, right? Or, yes, and when I was going to school, going to JC, and the teachers are uh, in the class and the boys are talking, you'd hear the teachers immediately say, all right, Jamaica College young ladies, <laughs> you know, knocking that, well, that they should be, you know, we call it now. They should be, they shouldn't be talkative because that's not one of uh, the, 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 the feature of a male. And in the Caribbean also, we have very specific gender roles. Males are caregivers, they are, no, sorry, females are caregivers. So girls, they are the ones who are supposed to wash the dishes, help in the kitchen, all of these different stuff. The boys are seen as outdoor, uh, the protector. And also another gendered role in society is that males at a very young age are sexualized. So they are encouraged to form, have a girlfriend and all of these different stuff in Caribbean societies. All right, ladies. So, if we look in, if we look at characteristics of culture, culture is learned behavior, customs and tradition, norms and values, institutions that prescribe our behavior and our different gendered roles. So if you're going to the exam and they ask you what to talk about three ways in which we view culture, you said one way in which we view culture is learned behavior. You give the example, one way is customs and tradition example norms and values examples or you could go institution that prescribe behavior values or gendered roles values sorry gendered roles examples all right ladies any question any comment any question no comment no, all right, no sir all right hope i was clear enjoy the rest of your day Thank you, same to you. Thank you, sir, same to you. Bye, sir, thank you. Bye-bye.